how are you? I am so excited to be stamping here with you today. It is March, I think, what, 29th? And we are live on YouTube. Now, if you're watching it after this date, that's okay. It's the replay. But sometimes people are confused. They think it's a live because they see the countdown, but the live is gone. So welcome to those of you that are joining us live. And then those of you that watch us later on as the replay. Hello, I see lots of people popping on here. Um, I like to get right to business, but I like to wait about one minute just to give people time to find me. Um, and then we're going to dive into the, today's project. Oh, gosh, gosh, if I can't even talk now, how are we going to get through this whole thing? Um, so I wore my shirt, my Creative 8 shirt, and I did that to remind myself as I'm seeing myself on the camera here to tell you that Friday, April 1st, registration is going to open up for the Spring Creative 8 retreat. And I am so excited. I have so many things I want to tell you, but I can't tell you yet. Um, but I can tell you, you want to join us. We've made some fantastic changes. Um, those of you that have joined us before knew, know that we started heavily on Facebook and then we started came over here to YouTube Live. Well, this time we even have a private website page for you where everything will be posted. When you register, you get the password. That's where we're gonna put the tutorials, the video links, the video replay links, post everything. Um, so we, we just have strived every single retreat to make it easier and easier and easier for you. And I'll be a little selfish, a little bit easier for us to keep up with all of it as well. So you don't want to miss out. We have nine stamping presentations. One of them's mystery stamping with Sharon that everybody loves. That's like the fan favorite. Um, but then eight other live stamping presentations and the projects are going to blow your mind. We have everything from quick and easy, huh? like yours truly, everything I do quick and easy, but believe it or not, I'm going to do something a little messy this time. My fingers are going to get inky, but it's still a quick and easy technique. And all of our tutorials will have three projects for you with complete step-by-step -step instructions. So I think I did the math. It was like 36 different card tutorials that you're going to get. So I do hope you decide to join us. Now, if you are not on my email list, you're going to want to make sure to sign up today. I know Megan put the um, link in there. Otherwise, over on my blog, you can get on that email list as well because I will be sending out the registration information first thing mon or Friday morning. And you want to register right away because we're doing something new and different. We have an early bird registration bonus. It is a fun fold tutorial that will be for everybody that registers early and you don't want to miss out on that. So can you tell I'm excited? So I just wanted to share that little bit with you. Watch for that email at eight o'clock Eastern time on Friday, click register, get registered right away because then on Monday we start with stamping challenges. And again, more tutorials for you and more stamping fun. So I can't wait um, to share more with you. So make sure you, you register first thing Friday morning. All righty, are you ready for today's project? Um, I am featuring today here, let's just kind of flip some things around here. We are featuring the Tulip Fields Bundle. I'll ignore these little yellow doohickeys here. You'll know what these are in a second. Um, the Tulip Fields Bundle has coordinating dies with it, and it is fantastic. Some people were like, oh, did you design that set? No, I didn't design that set. Um, but other people, I have seen or gotten quite a few different comments from people saying that they weren't sure how to stamp the tulip fields like you see in a lot of the samples or the catalog. So I thought today the focus was going to be primarily how to stamp these the tulip fields because I have a couple of tricks to make it easy peasy because you know me, nothing is hard. And then I have a couple of cards to share for, with you. And then I want to tell you about a tutorial that I also have available. So let's just go ahead. And I have a piece of basic white here. Now, remember, every single one of my videos, live or regular, there will be a um, blog post, a corresponding blog post. The link will be down in the video description of this video to get you over there. And you'll find pictures of the two cards I have to share with you today 
and the recipe. That means all the measurements and the complete list of the supplies and the colors and everything I use. So if you would like to make these same projects, just like I made them, just grab that link and go over to my blog and you'll get all of that information. Okay, so basic white. Now let's get ourselves organized. I'm gonna have to clean my stamps here. Usually when I'm creating and doing a video, I, I clean them all afterwards. So we'll see if I remember if we get some icky colors going here. Okay, so to make our field of tulips, because I'm kind of OCD when it comes to having things straight, I am going to use my grid paper to help me be straight on this. And we're going to start with the one stamp that is the long one that has the two triangles on it. So we will go ahead and let's start out here with Poppy Parade. Now, because I want this nice and straight, I am going to take my piece of cardstock and I'm going to line it up on a line on my grid line here. That way, when I line this up and you can see it's nice and straight and I'm going over that paper, I am going to line it up with a grid line as well. Now, usually I have my head smack dab over it. So we'll see how good we, we do on this one. And I can kind of offset it a little bit or center it more. Either way, that doesn't matter so much. Um, it just gives you a little bit different um, kind of focal point. So that looks pretty straight across my paper. So this would be like our horizon line. Then the next one, and we're going to just stick with a couple colors here so we don't have to clean too often. The next one you want to do is one coming straight down. And again, I'm going to use that grid paper and we're going to line it up. The tip of the stamp, I'm going to put right up there in the tip of the opening. And to get it somewhat straight left to right, I will again look through that grid paper and try to get that bottom, which is a pretty straight line, straight, and I don't know, it might be a little crooked. But I'll tell you, the one thing I found, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. There is some wiggle work, room, so don't let it intimidate you. Now, this is the stamp we're going to use to fill in the rest of our tulip field. But since I'm switching colors, I need to clean it. Sorry, that might have shook the table a little bit. So I'm just using my chamois. I'm getting that red off of there. And then let's go ahead and switch to Highland Heather. So we're going to ink that up. And next, we're going to do one over here on the left. And again, without putting my head right in there. I don't know. Oh, that's pretty good. We're going to do one on the left. Again, bring that point right up there and then line it up against the edge. There is room to put a little bit of white space in between. You can see that one's a little bit close. There's a little bit more white space. So again, doesn't have to be perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Then we're going to go ahead and let's switch to Mango Melody. And this should have room for one on each side. So we'll go like so and like so and there is our field of tulips now was that easy enough um you know i found i played around when i first got the stamp because i'll admit i was a little scared how the heck do you stamp this and i really found by going ahead and doing this one and then the middle one it made it really easy to just fill in the others now, this is kind of distracting let's flip that over Okay, so I want to show you a couple other tips on, on some card, on making these cards here. So we're going to do a little sky. And here's those yellow things. I said, ignore what these are. Um, these are post-it notes that I cut out. There was, um, with the dies are these clouds. And so I cut out three of them out of post-it notes. And then I am going to use balmy blue and a blending brush. Now, it, you've seen me use the blending brush before. Remember, the trick is ink this up and start off your paper and then slowly come on. Off the paper, kind of roll it in circles and slowly come on over those clouds. And so we're going to do that because what happens, you can even see my little blotches there. If I take this and just go right here and start rubbing, I'm going to get a blotch like that. So that's why we start off and roll on. Now I want this to be pretty subtle. I don't want a ton of color on there. Um, and really it doesn't look like there's much there at all right now until we peel these off. But look at that. Now you can really see um, those clouds. So there is that. And then what we want to do is just build the rest of our scene here. 
So let's go ahead and we're going to do this, this windmill stamp. Okay, this has a large windmill die. Oh, I am up a little bit high here. We're going to come right off the top of that card. See, this is up a little bit high. That should have been down lower. It's okay. It'll work, right? And then, so we're going to build our scene. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I do have um, the larger tree. And just a little tip on this. If I was to ink this up and stamp it, you would see here, it's just all green. Okay, we've got the evergreen here. But if I take it and I use my um, stamp and write marker. Don't do this with blends. It has to be a water-based marker. And it's the early espresso. After I've inked it up, I'm kind of dabbing some um, this early espresso down on trunk, you know, like right in here. Ink that up and then I stamp it. Now when I stamp my tree, you can see I've got some brown down on here with the green tree. So it's, it's just an easy way to get a little bit more color on that stamp. Now you could also use your marker for the top of it and then um, the brown marker for down at the bottom, but it works just as well to ink it all up in green and then add that brown. Then let's add a little bit of the smaller, I call this more of a bush, and we'll kind of put some of these along that. So that kind of, I guess, finishes off, you know, that we've got um, there's kind of a field there with a big tree in it, some little trees. Now let's go ahead and color our windmill. Now to do that, I am using my crumb cake. Now, one thing I used to always, always, always say that when you're coloring with Stampin' Blends that you want to stamp in black, in the Memento Black. Um, but recently, and I don't know why I never tried it before, I did find that if you stamp in any of our water-based pads, which are all of ours, okay, the regular Stampin' Pads, um, you can color with Stampin' Blends as well. That color does not smear. So in this case, I did want, you know, more of those brown tones. Notice I did light and then some dark, came back with light. Um, but it, so it's stamped in early espresso and colored with the crumb cake. And then I did just put a little bit of this out here. Didn't color it super solid, but just enough to add some color. And see how easy that was to color. So you get the right color. With your blends, make sure you snap them when you put them on. And then just a reminder, don't use the blends directly on the stamp. It has to be Stampin' Right markers on these. These are only for coloring. All righty, I think that is most of our card there. So let's go ahead and we're going to stick that on. Yep, I'm like, did I cut that wrong? We will add this to a piece of early espresso. Oh. Like so, but I just, I don't know. I love the stamp. Um, I will tell you, because I have, I was going to say it's a secret, but it's not so much a secret. I have this, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so this stamp set is actually in the mini catalog that is good through the end of June. So come June, it'll probably be on a retiring list and then while supplies last, um, but it is not in the next catalog. So if this is one you want, make sure you grab it before it's gone. Now, my original sample, I did put this on crumb cake, but as I was pulling out my supplies, I wondered how that would look. Nah, you know what? I actually like it on the crumb cake better. I think it makes that windmill pop a little bit more. So let's add that on here. Okay, so there we go. And all I need to do is add a greeting on here now. So we're going to cheat just a little bit here. And here's one. This is a greeting from the... Um, flowering tulip stamp set. Great greetings that pair with the windmill set really well because our tulip fields doesn't have any greetings. So I just use a circle punch or a circle die there and added the greeting on there. So the whole purpose of showing you this card 
was, well, one, to show you how to make the sky with the clouds, but more so to show you how to stamp these tulip fields and how easy they are and what a great spring card it makes. Now, I have another card to share with you. And again, I cheated. I made this one ahead of time, but a lot of it's the same. You can see here, there is our field of tulips. This time, the tree, I used a die to cut it out, and I did that just so I could have it kind of hang over the edge to add a little bit of um, dimension to it, I guess. Another word from our greeting from the tulips, but this time I used the windmill die pieces. And you can see that windmill consists of three different pieces. So I just cut it out of crumb cake, soft suede, and early espresso to make the windmill. Super easy to cut out, glue together. And here I did put a matte black dot. Can you, I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, but if you want to get real fancy, you could put a little brad in there and then your windmill would even spin. But I wanted to show you this card because a lot of it's the same. Okay, there's that same field of tulips. There's our sky that's blended with the post-it notes for our clouds. And I wanted to show how easy it is to make these super fun spring cards. So I hope you like that project. Now I have four other cards to show you um, and then tell you about, let's see, I do have a tutorial available that has six cards um, for the Tulip Fields Bundle um, stamps. And so it will give you step-by-step -step instructions for both of these cards. Now don't forget, I have the measurements and the products are also on my blog. So if you don't need step-by-step -step instructions, you can go find all the details on these. But it also has all the step-by-step -step instructions and as well as um, the card recipes and all the cutting for the other four. But you can see these two use the windmill um, die and then a lot of the designer series paper that coordinates with this. And then a cute little square one and then another one that's similar to what I did, but there's a lot more going on here. We used a few more pieces and cut them out. So if you want a tutorial that has six card ideas for using this, check that out. That's over on my blog post or yeah, in the blog post, you'll find it over there as well. Phew. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed those projects. I hope you see that they're easy enough. And I hope you fell in love with the tulip feels just like I have. Great spring cards. Um, so once again, I'm going to give you a little peek. I can show you the cover, but that's all I can show. Yesterday, I received the new catalog in the mail. Um, this does start May 3rd. So don't get all antsy pantsy yet. You can't get it yet unless you're a demonstrator. Um, if you're a demonstrator, they'll be sending you one. But I will have um, on my blog probably mid third week or so of April, I'll have information as to how you can request one of these when you... Um, if you would like to get a copy of the catalog and then just because i can i can tease you a little bit here is one of the new stamp sets coming in this catalog and i'm so excited nice big greetings i love nice big greetings so i can't wait to be able to to use these on some projects as well so there was just a little tease okay make sure you're on my newsletter so that you get the registration information for the creative eight retreat opens up eight o'clock eastern time friday morning i would love if you pick me to register with click that register button and i promise to take care of you and get you all the information right away private password to a private website and we're going to have so much fun and you're going to have so much stamping inspiration your head's going to explode so I suppose I could have switched our cameras there. You're probably looking at my screen here, my tiny little face. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a tip or two. And that if you have the Tulip Fields bundle, it helps you to make it a little bit easier how you stamp those tulips because they are simple. So I'll be stamping again with you real soon. I hope you have a stamp happy day. See you later. Bye-bye.